Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. Today we're going to be assessing some teaching from Lovi Elias. Lovi is a self-proclaimed prophet and a pastor at a church in California. Today we're going to listen to a handful of minutes taken from a recent video he posted to YouTube, and we will simply be comparing what he is saying to the Word of God. But first, if you'd like to help promote Christian content here on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel, and thank you in advance. Okay guys, here we go. Uh, let me let me push this revel revelation a little deeper. Do you know why God forgives men, mankind? Do you know why God looked at men and decided to save us, and why He refused to save the de devils? Why He never gave Satan redemption? Why He never gave the other demons that He took? He never gave them redemption. Do you know why? It is because the devil had no tempter. Do you have a passage of scripture for that? I don't see any verse or any passage in the Bible that says this is the reason that mankind has an opportunity to be, to be reconciled to God, but that Satan and the fallen angels did not. This is pure speculation. Scripture does not give us the ins and outs of why God did everything the way that he did it. Now, I think there might be certain clues that we can pick up on, but I think it would be foolish to uh, presume upon God why he did certain things. I could certainly say that mankind, unlike the angels, were made in the image of God. I can think about passages of scripture that talk about salvation being to the praise of his glorious grace. So when God saves wicked, sinful people like you and me, it is to the praise of his glorious grace. We will see his grace even greater because we are so bad and we are so wicked and we don't deserve it. But this idea that he is talking about is simply not supported by scripture. Nobody mm. tempted him. Wow. He made a conscious decision. Oh, that's good. But Eve was mm. tempted. She was deceived into sin. Mm. So out of the innocence of her heart, she sinned together with the heart. Okay, so, so now Lovi is saying that when Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, it wasn't because of some wickedness or sinfulness in her heart. No, she had a pure heart. She was just deceived. Again, do we have any indication in Scripture that that is the case? Not at all. Husband, not out of their rebellious heart. Deep. So God had to find redemption for them because as far as God is concerned, by the law they have sinned, but because of their heart they did not. Wow. Okay, so uh, again, where do you see this in Scripture? That God says Adam and Eve, well, they didn't really sin in their heart. They meant well. They were just misled. In fact, here in a second we're going to read. Let's go ahead and go here to Genesis chapter 3. We talk about the fall. Uh, let's start right here. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. So Lovi, and he's going to continue with this teaching. He's basically going to say it wasn't intentional rebellion by Eve. No, Satan just deceived her. She didn't really know what she was doing. So she had an innocent heart. But if we notice, first off, I would like to point out the fact that um, if she didn't have the capacity to sin, to do something wicked, then when Satan says, uh, you will become like God when you eat it. It would have had no pull on her. But because there was there was something inside of her that wanted to be like God, that is why the temptation uh, was powerful enough for her to fall in. So it even says here in verse 6, it says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, a.k.a. it was going to help her be like God. That's what she wanted. That is a sinful desire. But not only that, she very clearly knew in verse 3 that she was not supposed to eat of this fruit. She was not supposed to eat that tree. So she knew that by doing so, it would be indirect rebellion to what God had commanded her to do. So we already see that this whole idea that Lovi is going to be teaching on is just foreign to the text. Mm. That's 
What saved the human race is the innocence of their heart. Okay, and I want to point out here that he specifically is talking about Eve, um, but I think at the very least it's confusing because he just talked about the human race and he said the innocence of their heart. Friend, that sounds like an ancient heresy known as Pelagianism, basically the idea that our hearts are inherently good. Jeremiah 17, 9 says the heart is deceitful above all things. Some translations will say wicked, desperately sick. Who can understand it? So he's making it seem potentially like all humans have innocent hearts and that is certainly, that is actually heretical. That has been condemned by church councils as heresy. Not their disobedience. Did they disobey God? Yes. But did they disobey God because they hated God? No. Did they disobey God because they wanted to do their own thing? No. If you read... Is that so? Because remember Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So he said, did they disobey because they hated God? Well, Jesus said that if you loved him, you would keep his commandments. So if they didn't keep a commandment from God, were they loving him in that moment? No, they were not. In Genesis chapter 3, it literally tells you that Eve's conclusion of everything that Satan said was one thing. Wow, this fruit does look good for food. It tells you she, she didn't know anything. No, you that's not true. See, that is a lie. He said that was her only conclusion, that it's good for food. We go here to verse 6 again. That was the first part of what she said. She saw the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She wanted to be like God. So he is actually lying with that statement. You'll be like God. What the heck does that mean? I don't know. He doesn't want you to be like him. Well, I look like him. Okay, so, so now you'll see where he's going with this. He's basically saying that the desire to be like God would not have been a temptation to Adam and Eve because they already were like God. So he just said there, I'll back it up just a second so you can hear it again. He said, what does that mean? I look like him. Mm. You'll be like God. What the heck does that mean? I don't know. He doesn't want you to be like him. Well, I look like him. I look like him. Friends, being made in the image of God, I have a whole video on this uh, on my channel, does not mean that we physically look just like him. In fact, John 4 says that God is spirit. He doesn't, God the Father does not have a physical form. That's not what it means to be made in the image of God. But now he's saying basically that Adam and Eve were already like God, and we're going to see him expand upon this. Uh, again, remember, guys, being made in the image of God does not mean that you are exactly like God. And Adam and Eve being made in the image of God does not mean they were exactly like God, because God is incapable of sinning. But we've already seen Adam and Eve did fall into sin, so that is certainly not what it means to be made in his image. Hmm. If it is it's me every day, what do you mean he doesn't want us to be like him? Remember, Adam and Eve were so deep spiritually that their eyes could see both the physical world and the spiritual world. They did not. So now Adam and Eve could see the physical and the spiritual world. Do you have a passage of scripture for that, friends? If you listen to Lovi Elias, can you point me to the passage of scripture that clearly teaches that? There is none. He is making all of this up. And he claimed at the very beginning of this video, this is all by revelation. This is supposed to be some deep understanding that he has gotten from God personally, I guess. But we see the things that he is saying, they don't accord with sound doctrine and what's in the scripture. So this, this revelation is not coming from God. I don't see any need to be like God. They were okay being under the care of God. But Satan used the same knowledge and the same poison he used in heaven to try and pollute them. Mm. I will be like the most high. Then it comes to them. Uh, this made me fall. Let me use also it on them. Yeah. You'll be like God. Well, I don't know what that means. Because Adam and Eve were already the gods of the earth. Yeah. Adam and Eve were already the gods of the earth. Friends, that is heresy. They were not gods. They were, when, when God created them, he said, let us make mankind, right? Clearly, the Bible calls them mankind. They were male and female. They were man together, right? So this idea that they were gods is not true. They had dominion over the animals. That is true. God gave them dominion over the animals, but that does not make them God. God already made them to have dominion over everything that is in the earth. They were the gods of the earth. False. So out of their innocence, they sinned. They weren't innocent. When you sin, you are not innocent. They didn't sin out of pride, out of rebellion. Anyone who says that is a lie. In fact, the Bible tells you Adam did not sin. 
Okay, so let's just well, let, let him go for another second, just so he can double down. Some people don't know that. Do you think Jesus will call him himself the second Adam if Adam sinned? Okay, so now we'll end right here. So Adam apparently did not sin. Let's go to Romans 12 and look through verse 14. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and that actually means man, not woman, man, a male, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. Scripture makes it very clear that Adam absolutely did sin. And Jesus is called the second Adam. And so his attempt to use logic, oh, do you think Jesus could be called the second Adam if Adam sinned? Uh, Yes, because the point of Jesus being called the second Adam is just as the first Adam, his sin permeated to all people so that all people are born with what is referred to as original sin. We are all born guilty in the sight of God. And this is confirmed not only by Romans chapter 5, but we can look at, oh, excuse me, let me get it, Ephesians chapter 2. And if we go here, to verse 3, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature, original sin, by birth, children of wrath, we were guilty at the moment of birth. That is what it is all about. And so, uh, because of the sin of the one man, Adam, all of us are born guilty. But because of the righteousness of the one man, Jesus Christ, the many will be accounted as righteous for those who are trusting in him. And so when Jesus is called the second Adam, it's not because his life parallels the first Adam in his sin. It's actually because of the result of one act has a wide sweeping effect on many people. That's why he's called the second Adam. He's called the, the true and the better Adam. He's the one who perfectly fulfilled God's commandments. So we see this is false teaching from Lovi Elias, and he is setting it up as though he is getting some deep revelation from God. But when you take the time to assess the things that he is saying and you compare it to scripture, you see that this man is not rightly teaching God's word. Okay, guys, this is my first time doing an assessment with Lovi Elias, but there are numerous videos already out there on YouTube that show him twisting the Bible and show him uh, giving many false teachings. And so for that reason, he is someone that we are to avoid in the Christian faith. If this video today has been helpful to you and you want to help reach more people, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you would like to partner together with me financially in ministry, make sure you check out the link that I will post down in the description. It is a profile on Ko-fi and you can support on a one-time basis or monthly recurring gifts and all of it is greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, God bless.